first speaker for today is Ms. Aparna Vino, an environmental economist and social entrepreneur. Ms. Aparna is the founder of Igloo Kupa, which is a platform to rent out or book unique hygienic vacation rentals in India. She has a decade long, long experience in sustainable lifestyle promotion. With many accomplishments under her belt, I'd like to invite her to speak more about her journey. Over to you, Aparna. Thank you, Prakriti. I hope I'm audible. Is my voice clear yes. enough? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Aparna. I'm good. Go ahead. The lighting yeah. and everything is fine, I guess. You can see it's me. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, all. Uh, and uh, hope all of you are uh, safe and healthy. Uh, the pandemic is like uh, giving us a challenge every day. And uh, yeah, like Prakriti mentioned, uh, I've been um, into this scene uh, since 2010. Uh, when, you know, as, as soon as I completed my uh, post-graduation. So this is Aparna here uh, from Kerala. I'm a mother to, uh, to be very naughty young boys. My husband is also an entrepreneur. He's also a soft skill trainer. Both of us have uh, now settled down in the mountains uh, in Vainad, uh, which is one of the most beautiful tourist destinations in Kerala. Um, I'm privileged to be uh, talking to you all. For me, it's more like a, a brushing up session after a long break. I've not been doing uh, much of my activities for past three months. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm really warming up. Uh, coming back to my uh, work again. So I thank the uh, organizers for uh, this opportunity as well. So um, I think I must start with my childhood because uh, that laid uh, the foundation for my journey. I was born and uh, raised in a, a village household where agriculture was like by default happening. Uh, we used to cultivate almost everything that was uh, required for our household. There were cows, we had people coming and doing so much of work. There was a uh, agrarian calendar per se. And my life was completely dependent on that. My holidays were like uh, filled with a lot of activities because uh, most of the things happen during the public holidays where the schools don't function. So I spent my childhood in nature with people who were deeply into farming, both by their passion and due to their you know, necessity uh, to earn a livelihood. So I grew up uh, reading some books also. So that did contribute uh, to some amount of knowledge for a, a girl from a very remote village in Kerala that did matter a lot. And I'm talking about one uh, starting to sound, I, I'm starting to feel a little old. In those times uh, there was, you know, internet was like out of question. And the first uh, internet connection that I had at home was the uh, the slowest possible, the landline uh, thing. And I had to wait for at least 15 to 20 minutes to get the thing connected to my uh, desktop. So that was when I started connecting with the world and started learning about a lot of things that's happening uh, in the you know economy and all that stuff. By then I was into my college. So that was my uh, background. And by choice, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. In short, I did not, um, or I wanted to realize my dreams and be on my own, economically independent. And as far as my ideology is concerned also, I wanted to do something on my own. And all of that, I was sure, should be contributing towards the betterment of the planet and people. So uh, before this uh, trend of uh, you know uh, sustainable uh, business and all happened for me, I didn't have the another way of thinking. For me, it was naturally happening that I would do something which is to do with the nature. So uh, it was part of my lifestyle. That's what I'm trying to convey. And um, I did my MBA. I had to have a, a, a degree. So I, when I'm trying to connect my story to the topic of this uh, panel discussion, it's uh, about green jobs. So like Prakriti mentioned, uh, when you look at your skill development, uh, friends, you must make sure that you have something in your basket by the time 
you're either going to get into a job or be an entrepreneur for yourself because uh, now it's pretty competitive, especially the pandemic has changed a lot of things. Now new systems have to evolve. So it's very important that you be uh, competitive in the field, uh, be it a green job or not. It's very important that you have enough of qualification by the time you enter the job market. So make sure that you uh, add value to yourself and you get good certificates in hand by the time you're ready to work. Uh, which uh, as an entrepreneur, I was like missing a bit. And uh, I must say that I did not have much of experience in the corporate life because as soon as my post graduation was over, I jumped into uh, my you know, uh, career as a entrepreneur. I, I cannot say that I'm a businesswoman or anything. So the first uh, initiative that I did was to promote environment friendly lifestyle products. So I believe that if there has to be an impact, obviously the number of people uh, who contribute to a particular thing has to be on the higher side, right? So when you look at uh, the amount of pollution or whatever thing that is negatively impacting the planet or the climate, you see that it's because a lot of people are not aware of what they are doing. They are simply not aware. It's not a fault. They're not aware. Some people are aware, but they don't have a choice. But follow whatever is not the right thing. So all put together, there is a majority who create the impact. There is a minority who is now aware of all the problems in the uh, <clears throat> environment and all that, but that's not enough. There is a uh, lack of balance, so serious lack of balance. So ordinary people must think of environment friendly lifestyle was my principle. That is still my faith. And uh, since 2010, I did start working on that uh, cause and I identified uh, artists, craftsmen who uh, did very small things like make uh, daily use uh, baskets out of uh, waste plastic and stuff like that. Very small people. I took them to a platform. I helped them market their products and that went on for a while. And I entered travel industry by the year uh, 2000 and uh, 14 for um, six years, that is till 2018-19, um, I was uh, operating service villas in Vinod. I was basically a host welcoming people. Now, can I have the slides, please, Prakriti? Yes, can I have will. yes, yes, yes. Just a Yeah, so uh, Igloo Pupa is my venture, which I'm still floating. Uh, this was uh, selected. Uh, Abrar, can I uh, pause the presentation? Can you please do that? Yeah, thanks. So uh, with my uh, experience in hosting people who came for a holiday, I understood that it's high time I switch or I focus on travel industry as a tool to contribute to the environment. As an entrepreneur, I started feeling that it's my responsibility to ensure that I do my bit in uh, promoting green travel or slow travel or sustainable travel. That's when Igloo Pupa was founded in the year 2018 and it was selected as one of the top 100 business ideas in India by NSR Cell, the Business Incubation Center at Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. That was my uh, first recognition and I later on did uh, participate in the climate launch pad um, where I met wonderful people like Jui and Pratap. So um, this is a platform where uh, we grade vacation rentals very similar to what other portals do. They, there is a rating for the uh, hotel or homestay where you make a booking. I'm sure all of you are aware of this and you travel in this manner. So on my platform, we grade uh, unique rentals. Unique matlab, uh, we promote only homestays and small hotels, boutique hotels, which have maximum of 10 to 12 rooms. That's it. We, we are not into a large inventory uh, resort or anything like that. So we grade them based on their sustainable practices. We look at their architecture, the type of architecture they follow, the kind of waste management that they do the level to which they engage the local community, the level of employability that they bring in, the organic food that they could 
give in the uh, serve for their guests or whatever. So these are a few uh, factors based on which we grade the rentals. Now, can I have the next uh, slide, Abhraj? Yeah, uh, so I had to be specific on a geographical uh, area uh, for my business and uh, home is where my heart is. I want my uh, country to be a green destination and I thought that was the right thing for me to do. Practically, it's a familiar uh, area also for me to operate. So I did things like uh, going and exploring homestays in Spiti Valley. Uh, and I met some of the wonderful hosts who already are into sustainable practices as far as their business is concerned. Uh, can I have the next slide? Yeah. Um, now, um, I've always been enthusiastic about uh, the activities that the United Nations have been doing. And uh, to my surprise, and I was thrilled to find out that the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals do have a focus on travel and tourism also. Uh, they try to connect uh, SDG 8 and 12 with tourism. And actually, according to UN, uh, the fourth SDG, that is um, life below water, 14th uh, SDG uh, is uh, to do with tourism, but I did tweak that a bit. I did take the liberty and I feel, believe that uh, climate action is what uh, travel and uh, tourism should be contributing towards. Next slide, please. Aparna, can you please yeah. wrap up in two minutes, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm almost done. I just have- Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, um, Coming back to the SDGs and this slide. So there are three uh, uh, reasons why UN wants uh, tourism to be uh, contributing to the SDGs and vice versa. This is my reason why I believe that travel and tourism is going to be the major player in post pandemic, if at all we have a post pandemic situation. Uh, tourism is what I believe is going to recoup the economy, which is already in a very bad shape, because this is supposed to be the second largest industry in the world, contributing to close to 10% of global GDP. Um, you can uh, go and Google for more data. And um, my vision is that my platform will be a space where both entrepreneurs and uh, travelers will be able to come together and promote their thoughts and philosophy as far as their love for nature is concerned. Um, I think I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aparna, for that yeah. wonderful insight. Um, I just had one question uh, with yes. regards to, yeah. So uh, you mentioned that the, the travel, the industry is really being hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so since it's been hit so adversely, mm -hmm. how did Igloo Poopa adapt to the changes? Uh, see, Prakriti, uh, this is, uh, there's a lot of technical work that has to be done uh, when a platform is coming up. So uh, luckily, my investments, uh, when it comes to money, that's what mattered the most during the pandemic. Uh, I'd already done my work and the basic cost was recovered. So I could kind of relax. But if you ask me, what was the turnover? Absolutely nothing. Now, but um, things are picking up in spite of all the restrictions and this and that. I've started getting inquiries because the uh, key focus of Igloo Pupa is to promote hygienic and sustainable places. That was something which uh, my vision was there even before the pandemic hit. So the keywords help. Google, thank you. So uh, when people search for this, I, I think they are hitting upon this thing. So uh, I, I, if you ask me, yes, I was affected more. Uh, it was about my, you know, moral uh, things. I was, I, I didn't know what to do because I, I'm not an expert in any other industry. So uh, it, it was clueless, and people don't prioritize the leisure travel at all, especially when there is a pandemic. You know. You can't ask people to go on holiday. Even if they want to do, the system doesn't allow. So, yes, there is a lot of uncertainty. But but for sustainable uh, entrepreneurs, for people who are into sustainability and uh, nature-friendly enterprises, 
uh, it's going to be a great future ahead because there has been a lot of awareness happening that is free marketing for us. Across the globe, people started wondering what are they actually doing? So there is a lot of slowing down happening. Now the value of slow travel has come up. So right now there is a bit of uncertainty, but right. the future is going to be really, really nice. Definitely, definitely. I agree to that. Uh, I, I didn't want to uh, sound uh, negative. That's why, because thinking like that, I will go into depression and I will not be encouraging people to come into the scene because it's difficult. Right, uh, I'm sure it is, yeah. Uh, travel and tourism professionals are people who want other people to be happy. That's true. what I feel. So Yeah, uh, true, very true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the next so question. So one, one, yeah, one question from Lalita that's coming up is, yeah. How much is sustainable? Uh, how much sustainable livelihood e eco tourism does uh, contribute? Contribute? Are naturalists helpful in eco tourism? Is her question. Uh, so, see, uh, yeah. if you look at uh, Europe per se, that is what I understood in my research. They have hard and fast rules. They have certifications in place long back itself as far as i know it is at least say five to ten years old they are talking about all green travel and green certification and all that indian market is pretty new to it but young generation who's started traveling a lot they are familiar with this that's point number one now uh, it is about your attitude it's not like it, there is a problem of greenwashing also happening so um if, say, for example, even if you're going to a, a non-sustainable or non-eco-friendly place, if your practice is going to be nature-friendly, if you carry a water bottle and refill your drinking water, you are into sustainability already. So um, there is a bit of, uh, what do I say? Uh, there is nothing tangible when it comes to sustainability. That has been one uh, great challenge. Now, naturalists, yes, they are creating a scene for the whole thing. But the actual action happens from person to person. People make the difference. Right. It's right. about your, uh, it's, it's a value that you need to uh, practice and exchange. I, I hope I uh, answered the question. Definitely, you did. Thank you so much, Aparna, for that uh, very informative session on how sustainability and tourism uh, can go hand in hand. And thank you for this new perspective. I didn't know myself that something like this could exist. So thank you so much, Aparna. Mm -hmm.